Ladies and gentlemen, it is often said that Adder is Grimm's worst nightmare in Tier 4, because Adder has increased movement, which is something that Grimm really doesn't like dealing with. But if Adder is Grimm's worst nightmare in Tier 4, I would imagine that Chatter, or Max as some call him, would be Grimm's worst enemy in Tier 2. Because Max is kind of like Adder, but better. Sure, he doesn't have the indirects, but he has movement and firepower, which is just two things that Grimm doesn't like dealing with at all. I mean, why would you even pick Grimm against Max in the first place? They're two tiers apart. This really shouldn't be a fair matchup. But ladies and gentlemen, this isn't the same player we're talking about. Today, we're checking out another game by the one and only Grim guy. In case you guys haven't seen this guy before, maybe you're new subscribers from the reboot camp, this is a player who only plays Grim on the Global League. And he picks Grim no matter what tier he's in, no matter who he's up against, and he's beating everybody. He's closing in on 1400 MMR playing solely as a Grim, which is a feat in and of itself. Uh, no other Grim account has been able to achieve this level of success. But this time, he's up against a very terrifying opponent, and someone who is definitely known as a solid player in the community. It is the one and only Kant Bay. Now, Kant Bay is mostly known for being a Fog player, but he's pretty solid in standard as well. He's no slouch. He's also a very, very friendly and helpful guy. I really, really appreciate this guy. He's super helpful. He always uh, shows up and helps out whenever you ask him to. He's helping me out with the egg cup. He's a super helpful player. He has tons of replays. You ask him for help, he's gonna provide you with a ton of information. Just an overall really, really friendly guy. I can't say enough good things about him. But he is up against an absolute titan now in Grim Guy. But surely, surely, playing as Max, he should just be able to sweep the floor with him, right? So let's take a look at this CO matchup, shall we? Like, as I said, you know. This shouldn't really be a fight, in, under normal circumstances. Grim, of course, he's terrifying, he's got a lot of firepower. But that reduced defense, man, it is so bad. Like, against normal tier 4 COs with no firepower increases, this minus defense makes it very hard to play Grim. With Max, this is exacerbated to an insane degree, because, of course, extra firepower up against low defense. That just creates some absolutely insane calculations. Let me just show you very quickly how much Grim struggles against Max. So I, I pulled up a couple of calcs from Advanced Respy Web here. So this is a Max tank versus a Grim tank on a city with no comb towers. 59 to 67% damage. So you can't place your tank on a city. And and this map, by the way, this is Verdum of Valhalla. We'll talk more about it in a bit. Two comb tower maps. So this is just the very early game, okay? At, so, at some point, both players are going to secure two comb towers, and it's going to be even wilder. So as Grim, you cannot safely place your tank on allied properties and have them be safe from a max tank first strike. You're going to have to have some sort of contingency plan. Now, if Max pops his max blast... It's even worse. He completely wipes out Grimm's tank almost in one shot. You, there is no protection. And also keep in mind, he gets that plus two movement too, so it's even harder to wall. Now, you may be saying, oh, but just put some infantry in front. That'll go okay, right? Like, infantry are great wallers. This is a Kalk. Max tank versus Grimm infantry on planes with one comm tower. One hit KO. I mean, have you seen anything so disgusting? Oh, we're not done. This is a max tank with max force and a comm tower against the Grim infantry on city. One hit KO. Your infantry on cities cannot withstand a max tank with a power up and one comm tower. It's absolutely disgusting. And and again, just yeah, this is this is the same calc, but still, I mean, just just look at this. Look at this! How are you supposed to defend against this? You can't! There is no walling that you can do against Max. You have to have perfect positioning. There is the only this is the only way you can survive. Normally, you just plonk an infantry in front of your tank, call it a day, you're okay. But against Max, playing as Grim, you just don't have that kind of luxury. No matter what you do, Max will one-shot your, your stuff. Like, especially with power stuff, there's just no surviving this. So, you have to position your units perfectly, you have to rely on more of like a mass of units to protect yourself against Max's Onslaught than anything else. 
And this is something I, I don't think most people realize just how good you have to be at positioning to actually pull something like this off against mechs. It, it requires such a good knowledge of the game and it really just like, again, I'll just let the match speak for itself. You'll see what I mean. Like under normal circumstances, this shouldn't be possible. So these players are playing on one of my favorite maps of all time. I think it's my second favorite map after Caustic Finale, Verdum of Valhalla. It is one of the best maps ever created. I never have a boring match on this map. All of my maps, every single game that I played on this has been an entertaining game. Whether I win or I lose, I always think, man, that was a fun match. And that it really goes to say how great this map is. So wild map, three fronts, Usually you don't fight too much in the center. There's usually just all the action takes place on the flanks. You can sometimes see some struggle about the cities in the center, but it's very rare. Normally it's considered too risky to try and fight over these two cities because they're so close to the bases. So you kind of have a weak side, strong side. Red side's strong side is here with uh, on the right side. And yellow side's strong side is over here. So this is Grim Guy's strong side. This is Kantpai's strong side. So you have strong side, weak side component, but just because it's a strong side weak side doesn't mean that you'll automatically win because of course once you once you as the red player start pushing into this area right here it's very easy for a uh, yellow player to reinforce they have to send send the units around and around about way but they can also build mechs battlecopters can reinforce from the airport right here it's very tricky and as you can see the comm towers are very exposed so if you're not careful your opponent can take both the comm towers from you and considering there's also a second comm tower for each player on these islands right here uh, that means that, let, let's, let, let's consider the, the potential nightmare scenario here. Grim Guy takes this comm tower and both of the comm tower. He now gets 30%, 60% day to day. He's advanced towards one max with a bit of extra. I mean, that's, that, uh, that is absolutely terrifying. That is absolutely terrifying. So, so uh, most of the time on Verdum, I find that the comm towers might not even be, get captured at all. They may just be continuously denied by both sides. Uh, and of course, uh, at some point, the players have to build transport copters to try and get these two properties right here, which is pretty important. And just, you have these pipe seams, which can be blasted open, and once that happens, suddenly the fighting can spill into the middle. Both players decide to reinforce, or they can pull forces from the middle over to the flanks. Uh, Verdum of Valhalla is just a map that just continuously evolves and gets more exciting the, the further the match goes on. It's, it's an absolutely insanely good map, and I absolutely love it. You have these two black boats right here, which can be used to reinforce infantry into the center. You can boost a little bit with, with black boats. You can also pull battlecopters back and repair with them, which is something that I enjoy doing. Lots of very strategic mountain positioning. So you can see mech play, artillery play, tank play. There's roads, so coal can be pretty good on this map as well. Again, just a very varied, very, very cool map. However, ladies and gentlemen, boom, I say we get started with this matchup right here. Grim Guy in the yellow, up in the north. Kant by in the red, down in the south. Kant by seemingly at a big disadvantage, or <laughs> I say disadvantage. Kant by seemingly at a big advantage against Grim Guy here. But then we have to remember that Grim Guy do not play like other mortal men. So let's see how he's able to do this. So there are actually many interesting openers on Verdum. A lot of players actually opt to not go for the base immediately, but rather capture these properties. This gives you a tank a little bit earlier. Let's see if Kanpai and Grim Guy decides to go for this particular opener. Yeah, so Kanpai already do. And I think Grim Guy does as well. Or will he go for the base? No. And uh, this is the, the first time I saw this opener was when it was done by Voice of Akasha, the legendary player who's never lost on the Global League on his main account. And he did this too, and you'll see, I think when you do this, you get a tank out and an infantry uh, one day earlier, which allows you to exert a lot of pressure. So most people do it. You may think, oh, but shouldn't you go for the base? You get a higher unit count. Yeah, technically you get like one extra infantry out of it, but it's many players consider it better to get a tank out earlier because it allows you to control the map. And when you're playing on Verdum, control of these two areas right here is paramount. As I said, if you if you somehow don't manage to secure your comm tower and your opponent secures theirs, or even worse, if your opponent takes both comm towers, you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle for the rest of the game. And once that comm tower gets taken, it's almost impossible to take back due to both players continuously fun funneling units into this area. So it's, uh, it's just very, very difficult. You gotta... You gotta really plan ahead. This is a very tempo-based map. Whoever can get the tempo advantage, 
usually will just play with an extra card in their deck for the rest of the match. So here you can see this is exactly what I was talking about. Grim Guy is now able to get that tank and that infantry out on day four. And we'll probably see Confi do the same, I imagine. Actually, no, he won't be able to do this. Because, um... Because of the first turn advantage, I think. Oh, never mind, never mind. I I, I don't know. I don't know what, what I was looking at there. Oh! <laughs> okay, so let me explain what happened there. I looked at his income and I thought that was his total cash, but no. It's, uh... <laughs> this is his total cash. This is his income. He has 10k in the bank, ladies and gentlemen. So, day 5 rolls in. Grim guy. I think both of these players have pretty much figured out the optimal capture chains on Verdum. But Grim guy opening up Recon, opening up Recon can be very strong on Verdum. Not everyone does it, but it, it can be very strong when done right. Because look at the roads. I mean, the roads lead straight down here, so the Recon is able to tra travel a disgusting amount. And uh, the Recon is very good at just interrupting these caps, especially as Grim. Of course, you gotta be careful, that recon will get one shot by any tank, but in standard this is not a big deal because it's quite easy to keep it away from enemy tanks. So I think both players are playing this pretty similarly, except that Confi decides to go for a second tank instead of a recon. So we're gonna see a lot of tanks here. Lots of tanks. Grim guy going for the comp tower right away. Confi can forgo his own captain truck, but it's probably not a good idea to do that. Recon swoops in, Grim Guy follows it up with a second rec uh, se second tank, moves this black boat in position to boosts. Oh, never mind, Kampai actually does interrupt his own capture to go for the uh, comb tower. He really doesn't want to let Grim Guy get this, and okay, I can kind of understand him. I mean, Grim Guy is already terrifying enough with his 30% firepower. Kampai doesn't want it to turn into 40%, so he actually forgoes his own capture to get the comb tower. Yeah, this is a nice little maneuver too. This is what I like to do this a lot when I play on Verdum. Move this infantry here, place the tank here. Now it's protected, and it's also covering the comb tower. Now Confi is going for his comb tower, but Grim Guy has to recon here, so I don't think this is gonna work out. Of course, Confi is saying, "All right, you want to use your recon to interrupt this? I'll kill your recon. Is it worth it? Do you want to sack 4k to delay my comb tower? We'll see. We'll see what Grim Guy decides to do here. Now Confi opens up with a recon of his own." So, both players now have two tanks, one recon. So, opening up very similarly here. Grim Guy decides to send his recon into the center to take a free shot at Kampai's infantry. Even though it has captured the, the, the city, he's like, alright, I'll take this free dude. He could even follow it up with his infantry and kill it. Grim Guy also foregoes his own capture to take a shot at uh, Kampai's cone tower. So, neither player is willing to yield their respective comb towers. Grim Guy scores first blood, killing the first infantry of the match. So against, like, in any normal, like, tier four battle here, like, say you were playing Adder versus Adder, it would be very viable to place this tank onto this comb tower and take a shot. But against Max, this just won't work because Max can just kill you. So instead, Grim Guy is placing the tank just out of range because the forest tile is slowing down the tank a little bit. He's just saying, "All right, you want to keep capping this comb tower? I'm going to keep it destroying your infantry. How many infantry are you willing to sacrifice to get this comb tower?" Confi rolls in with his recon, moves with the infantry over the mountains, capturing his airport. Another tank. He's being very cautious because keep in mind. Grim guy may have to prevent, ha, may have to be careful from letting his tanks get struck by Max, but Max has the exact same problem, at least as, uh, before his powers come in. In fact, it's almost worse for Kampai to be struck first by Grim's tanks. Grim guy doing the scorched earth strategy here, just targeting, target firing infantry. He knows he's gonna lose this infantry, but he's dealing damage to Kampai's infantry to weaken his capture game. With a 4 HP infantry and a 5 HP infantry, I mean soon to be three, 7 HP due to the repairs, Kampai's, rep Kampai's capture game is severely limited in this region. And Grim Guy also has many vehicles and infantry on standby to prevent further captures. So Grim Guy doing a great job just interrupting and slowing down Kampai's uh, game here. So here, 
Grim Guy is placing a tank on the city, but keep in mind he is placing another tank in reach of it. So if Kanpai wants to go in and strike, then he'll be struck back. So this is what you're gonna have to do as Grim. You need the chains. You cannot just place a tank on a city and, and think it's gonna be okay. It won't be. Not against Max. But as long as you have another tank guarding it, it will be safe. So when playing Grim, you have to have those chains perfected. Grim Guy building a mech. Mech's not bad on Verdum. They can traverse the mountains much quicker than infantry can. And uh, once and they're very easy to get into the center. And suddenly you got a mech, which is a very cost-effective way of dealing with the tank. So that's nice. Confi now going for this capture. It's going to take him... 4, 8, 12, 15... It's going to take him 6 turns to capture? 4, 8, 12, 15... 16... 5 turns. I'm very good at math, guys, I swear. Confi... Doing the Boltsy Recon move, placing it right on the comb tower, daring Grim Guy to attack here. Saying, if you do, I'm a, I'm a pummel ya. More tanks coming out, Black Boat being used to reinforce. So, we're probably not gonna see any more action taking place in the center. Grim Guy's got these two properties, Monk's got these two properties, there's nothing more to fight about here. When playing on Verdum, avoid the center at all costs, it's not a, it's not a good place to attack. Until these pipe seams come down into the late game, I really wouldn't focus on it a lot. There are some things you can do on Verdum, like for example, if, if it transitions into a center battle, you can like place an artillery here to try and lock the base down. I have done that before, but that's like way, way, way into the late game. At the start, just focus on the flanks. This is where the older properties are, this is where the juice is. But you can see both players are very scared of each other. Very scared of each other, neither player wants to commit. Artillery comes in, Battlecopter, Tank. No Comm Towers have been captured. They've done a good job of denying each other's Comm Towers. Day 9 rolls in. Can't find out. Cheekishly tries to capture this property. Let's see if he can do it or not. But yeah, looks like neither player are going to get the Comm Towers. Which I guess is good for both of them? I mean, the more firepower there is on both sides, the harder it becomes the wall. I guess Grim Guy is probably pretty grateful that there's no Comm Towers as of yet. Because again, I showed you those calcs earlier, how disgusting Max gets with one Comm Tower. And even two, it just becomes even worse. But it looks like, for now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a bit of a standoff. I do like that Grim Guy has incorporated an artillery into his unit composition on the left side, though. This gives him an advantage over Max for sure. This is something Max really can't do. Grim Artillery, they hurt, man. They're easy to kill, but they hurt. If you position them properly, the damage they deal is insane. Day 10 rolls in, and you can see both players just going for the properties on their side, content to simply do a standoff for now. More Battlecopters coming in from Kampai. Yeah, this is going to be one of those games, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be one of those games where, where, where neither player wants to attack, but the tension rests on a nice edge. Because you know, as soon as the first player draws first blood, it's going to be absolutely mayhem. But this is the thing. Grim versus Max, neither player really wants to attack. Because they know that whoever attacks first will endure a vicious counterattack. So... We're entering into a bit of a stall game here, but as you can see, there is one thing that will cause the players to go in, and that is if the other tries to capture the comb tower. Kampai doesn't want to give that comb tower to Grim Guy. He's happy to throw away an infantry or two to delay that. But you just look at this walling from both players here. It's impressive. Very impressive. I'd say Kampai definitely has an easier time walling because his infantry doesn't have reduced defense. But then again, Grim does 30% extra damage, so. I guess the calcs are mostly the same. I think Grim Guy might be a little bit worse off in terms of the, the walling, but still. And of course, we have to keep in mind, Grim, Grim does not get the extra movement during his powers. Max does, so that is an inherent advantage. Of course, neither player, neither players are close to getting their powers at this point, but once the tank starts flying and once the firepower starts rising, uh, those powers will come in mighty quick. Both Grim 
and Max have very short CO power meters. One of the reasons why, at least I think Max is very scary, is because his powers come in so damn quickly. Now Grim, now Confi is going for the com uh, ca uh, transport copter. He's like, yeah, Grim guy, gentleman's agreement to just build a transport copter each. I mean, it's a stolly match. We might as well go for it, right? So, uh, spoiler alert, this is going to go on for a little bit. This, this stolly face right here. So, I say we just go very quickly through it. But, ladies and gentlemen, believe you me, when the firepower starts going off, it's going to be absolutely glorious. So here, um, yeah, there's, there's like minor skirmishes, but nothing crazy. You can see both players are very intent on not letting the other get the comm tower. But neither players are very committed to the attack either way. Just inching slowly forward. Now, I am kind of glossing over this, but I will say that Grim Guy's positioning here is impeccable. I mean, I'm not going into great detail here, but if you just look at how he walls off his units, it's almost perfect. I mean, like, he's leaving absolutely no openers for Kampai here. And as a Grim player, this is just something that you can't do unless you're insanely skilled. Most Grim players would not be able to pull this off. The amount of understanding you have to have in terms for positioning to pull something like this off is just insane. I mean, I'm sure there are mistakes here and there. I'm not good enough to spot them. But it is marvelous to see. Because one little misstep here and you are opening yourself up for a big attack. Look how close their units are. Looks like Grim Guy might actually get this Com Tower now. We'll see if Combi continues to sack infantry in now. We'll see, more tanks coming out, more battlecopters. And yeah, he just he continues to sack infantry and just to delay that cap. But Grim Guy now deciding to join Cap's infantry together here. He's deciding to join Cap's infantry. Oh my god, look how many units are on each side. They're closing in on 50 units. I think the new unit cap of Radum is 60. I'm not sure if it's 50 yet. But Kampai is like, oh my god, he's gonna get the comb tower. I need to do something. I need to do something. He continues to interrupt, throwing away two infantry to deny Grim Guy his comb tower. <laughs> look, look, look at it. Look at this. 47 units for Grim Guy. 48 units for Max. Or for Kampai. But neither player wants to give up that precious comb tower. But it's only a matter of time now, ladies and gentlemen. 17 days the buildup has been going on. The armies are massive. Grim Guy has hit 50 units. He's hit 50 units. When is it gonna stop? Kampai just edging slowly forward. Now going for the Com Tower himself, taking a bit of a shot. He's like, ah, oh, now I gotta make something happen soon. I gotta make something happen soon. And again, just continues to sack two infantry and to reduce the comm tower. He's basically sacking two infantry for every infantry that Grim Guy sacks. That's the positional advantage that Grim Guy has right now. And now Grim Guy is even taking the city. And he's killing a lot more Kampai's units than Kampai is killing Grim Guy's units. But it's just infantry so far. No big engagements has taken place yet. This positioning, man. This positioning. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, now Grim Guy actually rolls in with a tank. Now he's rolling in with a tank. Day 18. We haven't seen the big clash yet, but it's coming. Oh, it's definitely coming. He's delaying the comm tower by a single turn. That's all he needs. Day 18. Count by his normal power. Very close. Is he gonna go for it? I think he is. Yes, Count by says, I am done waiting. It's time. I'm gonna smash you. Oh boy, here comes the recon. Max Force! Oh, let's go. He's like, I got you now, Grim Guy. I got you now. And he's thundering in. See how much damage he's dealing. Oh my god, look at this level of damage. Now he's gonna get the comb tower too. It's not looking good for Grim Guy. And this is just on the right side. Here comes the left side attack. Barakopter one-shots infantry. One-shots another infantry. Goes for the capture. In comes the Barakopter. Another one-shot. Oh my god, he's just one-shotting units. Left, right, and center. More infantry coming in as shields. 
In comes the tank, one shots another infantry. So many infantry falling, but mostly infantry though. Though he does get an artillery and a battlecopter. Oh, it's a terrifying attack from Confi right here. Ooh. That's scary. Like a look at the value. 239,000 to 178,000. Oof. 50 to 31 units. Surely it's lost now, ladies and gentlemen. Surely it's lost. But it's not lost. Because here comes the Grim Guy. Counter attack. Haymaker gets popped. 90% firepower increase. No comb towers. So we don't get the 100. But that is absolutely scary. Let's see what happens. Battlecopter comes in, kills Compice Battlecopters. Medium tank one shots the tank. Sends in the one HP tank to chip a little bit to guarantee the one hit KO. Uses another one HP tank to chip a little bit. Another one hit KO. Another one hit KO. Battlecopter comes in, smashes. Another anti air comes in, kills a Battlecopter. Another Battlecopter falls. Oh my goodness, the firepower is insane. Grim guy is coming back in, he's brawling. And here comes the right side attack. Using the infantry to chip the tanks, you gotta love to see it. They have to do this because they don't have a comb tower. Or they don't have the second comb tower, I mean. Battlecopter comes in, bye bye comb tower, no more comb tower. Ooh, all of Kampai's battlecopters are gone. Vehicles go down. Left, right, and center. That was a bloody turn. And looks like Grim Guy has more than equalized the playing field here. Look at that. Look at that. Let's go back a couple turns. 50 units, 239,000. 31 units, 178,000. Boosh! Uno reverse card, says Grim Guy. 196,000 value to Max's 125,000. That is one of the most devastating counterattacks I have ever seen in my life. Kanpai really rolled in swinging, but he killed mostly infantry and a few vehicles. Once the infantry were dead, his attack stopped. Grim Guy popped Haymaker, and he had a much better counterattack. He lured Kanpai, and this is what Grim Guy does he lures people in. He drags them into a brawl, where movement doesn't really matter. This is what I saw him do to Adder, to Adder as Poland as well, or Poland as Adder. He just kept the brawl going. And it doesn't matter if you don't have extra movement when your enemy is right in your face. As long as your positioning is strong enough to survive their initial attack, you can pummel them on the counterattack. And this is just what happened here with Grim Guy. Let's see what Kampai can do right here. He doesn't have his firepower anymore, so his units aren't dealing as much damage as he would like. But he still has a decent force left. As you can see, he's not one shotting that Battlecopter, for example. It's pretty huge. The, if he had that extra comb tower, he would. And he would have been able to wall break Grim much better. He still gets a nice shot, though, but still not a one shot. He needs to one shots. He goes in with his tanks. Trying to do as much damage as he can. But he knows he's in trouble because look at Grim Guy. Three Battlecopters on this side. Kampai just built an anti -air. It's going to take one turn, two turns before it can even start entering battle. Within those two turns, these Battlecopters are going to mop up like six tanks. So this is bad for Kampai. This is really bad. Those three Battlecopters spells a lot of trouble for him. Even though he's slightly winning on the left side, he's going to get absolutely shellacked on the right side. Let's see what Grim Guy decides to do. Battlecopters come in. Yeah, those bot there's a fourth Battlecopter coming in even. Interrupts the capture. Mops up Kampai's tanks. Oh, lardy lard. Grim mechs. Oh my goodness. Yeah, those Battlecopters, they, they're, they're raining freely. And look at this. Kampai's untire on the left side goes down as well. Grim guy's brawling. He's brawling. Killing two Battlecopters, and suddenly Grim Guy has ear superiority on the left side as well! And brings in a third Battlecopter as well. Those Grim Battlecopters, man, they are disgustingly strong. They do so much damage. But Kanpai is not done, ladies and gentlemen. He has another Max Blast. Let's see if he can do something with it. Come on, Kanpai. Show them what you're made of. 
attacks the Barakopter with infantry for some reason? I guess he just really wants the wall break. That's a weird engagement from Kampai, if I may say so myself. <laughs> attacks the medium tank. I think Kampai is memeing at this point. I think he realizes he's lost. But he wants to go down swinging. Until he resigns. Oh my goodness. Grim guy. Never a boring match. Crushes a 1300 level player as max. I mean, it's absolutely insane. Um, the level of skill that this guy is displaying with his positioning is just off the charts. So I think we can conclude who's stronger. Grim is stronger. Go lift some weights, eat some donuts. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>